Hey guys, it's Venetia, and today I want to talk about the six books I read in the month of January. So I honestly felt like January was like 10 million days long, but we have reached the end, and I think a lot of good things are ahead in the rest of the year, so we're gonna get into it. The first one I read was Hopeless by Elsie Silver, and genuinely so cute. It had such a strong start, which is how it drew me into the book. I I feel like the Chestnut Spring series is just so hit or miss for me. Like I tried to read Flawless, it was a no for me. And then I also tried to read Powerless and that was also a no for me. I just, I just didn't care enough quick enough. But then, you know, I read Heartless and Reckless and I was like, oh, amazing, incredible, love this. And so, you know, I, I was easily drawn into those books. But the problem with Hopeless was that I was drawn in and then let down. The banter between Bailey and Bo is so good. And he's just so, like, protective of her and just caring and pays attention. That you're just like, how can you not love them together? But then, literally then, it just goes downhill. I don't know what happened. I can't put my finger on it. I have no idea what happened, but the last 100 pages were so boring. So boring! I literally skimmed it because I just could not care less about what was happening. <sighs> yeah, it just, the end, the last 100 pages, it just ruined it for me. I, I also just like, my rating is based very heavily on how the book is ending. And if you're not nailing the ending, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Like, I really don't... It really can't counteract how good the beginning was if your ending is trash. Because this is literally a romance, so you're kind of waiting for them to get together. And when they get together and it sucks, I just, I just can't care about it. I just can't care about the relationship. I really can't. So anyways, as you can guess, I didn't rate it super high. It was, it, I gave it a 2.75 out of 5 because uh, it just did not hit. And I was, I was really hoping because Heartless and Reckless, again, they, they were great books. I really love those couples. Bo and Bailey, like, you know what though? The epilogue actually kind of redeemed it like a small amount. We got some quality Willa and Cade content. That's a couple in Heartless. And that was so sweet because I love them. I actually cared about the ending. And then we got Bo and Bailey and they kind of got their spark back in the epilogue. So that minorly saved it. I think it would have been rated lower if it didn't have that epilogue. Which honestly is surprising because usually I do not care about epilogues. They don't really do anything for me. But you know what? Elsie Silver kind of nailed that epilogue. And I will continue to read Elsie Silver's books and just see how I feel because they either are bangers or I like actually don't like them. Like I will DNF them. So we shall see. But yeah. The next book I read was Heartless Volume 5. Honestly, I have such a sweet spot for this book because it's just such a sweet, caring, real book. Like they're just teenagers and they're just going through teenager problems. But they're also just like the ideal relationship because the or the ideal teenage relationship where they're they're just figuring things out there's no rush no one is like a super like a superstar in this relationship where they're just like knowing all the answers and like the parents are like just not even there it's just the teenagers solving everything you know this this series just has a lot of like you know sometimes you need help from other people that know better than you and like love is not gonna save you from whatever is happening eating disorders having like hard time coming to terms with who you really are you know it, it's just it's just so good i think i rated it four stars because it still makes me feel happy it's just like fluff personified into a book like this is just like feeling good you just feel happy reading this so i rated it four stars out of five lovely amazing we love nick and charlie in this book we're just following uh nick and charlie navigating uh, Nick having to go off to university and I just love that they both kind of had some personal development in this and that they're not gonna let the fact of their inner relationship stop them from growing and becoming better people 
So, you know, I loved it. It was cute. It was very cute. So the third book I read was Arm of the Sphinx, and this was my only carryover book that I had from December. And this was a banger. This is the second book in the Tower of Babel series, and I feel like this book let the series actually like find its stride because we got so much development of the side characters that like I kind of like them better than Senlin who's our main character and that's kind of crazy in a series like liking the side characters more than the main character because they're developed and not because you don't know enough about them like I genuinely feel like the author went into such a depth into why they act a certain way why they think certain things and then just the places that they end up in this book Oh, so good. So good. I, I can't wait to dive into the next book. It was just, it was just so, so good. And I feel like it's also that the first book is very formulaic. We just follow Senlin as he's kind of doing the same thing over and over again. As he's trying to find his wife, he's kind of going from one level of the Tower of Babel to the next level and he kind of has similar experiences. But yeah, it was so good. I rated that four stars and then I rated this four point to five. So still very solid book. I am really falling in love with this series more after the second book. I thought the first book I was like okay this is pretty decent. I wasn't like clamoring to get into the next book but after this one I'm definitely excited to continue and will be doing so very soon. The next book I read is from Luca with Love and I'm about to go off right now so if you did like this book I would skip to the next book. I genuinely thought, let me give Mariana Zapata another chance. Like, I understand slowest of slow burns, but I was like, maybe I'm in the mood for that. Let me give her another shot. You know, some people grow from book to book. <sighs> this book was not my cup of tea at all. I literally felt like, okay, you know what? I get it's enemies to lovers. I get it. I get it's enemies to lovers. But they're they're sitting at like a negative 100. They really don't like each other. They're so rude, so mean to each other. Like he body shames her. She's just like generally immature. Like it's just, they're just not compatible in my opinion. So they're starting at 100. And I got 64% of the way through or 65%. I got pretty a pretty decent chunk into the book why are they still like so mean to each other at that point in the book like you can't go like i can't imagine the last like 36 percent of the book they're really gonna become like amazing like i'm so happy they're together like there's no way you can really fix that dynamic that terrible dynamic of a relationship so quickly it wouldn't make sense it would ruin the flow of the book <sighs> it was so bad and then please tell me why he was literally like knocking on her forehead to wake her up when she's sick. Like I guess he was, he was trying to give her medicine but like if you're gonna like have if you're gonna market this book as romance we need to have some minor development of them at least having feelings for each other or like becoming slightly nicer to each other through the course of the book. We can't really have people knocking on each other's foreheads with their fists like that far into the book like there's no way I'm gonna want you guys to be together like be so for real right now that oh, it was just so bad and I feel like I have wasted my time reading that book I should have known better because I was contemplating the entire book or not the entire book but I probably got around 20 percent and that's when I want to make a decision if I'm gonna DNF and I was like mm, I don't know I don't know if you don't know just DNF it because <sighs> it was it was not good it was not good but like again if you liked this book let me know why like did I miss something but really oh, it was just it was not I just don't get how we're gonna go from like negative 100 to them even liking each other forget loving each other <sighs> bruh bruh and the last two books I listened to on audio. So I've been trying to make my way through the Vampire Academy series. And before you comment, yes, I'm aging them up in my head to like past university, if not like at least later university years, post 
graduate like age because tell me why like 18 year olds are really going to be graduating to become like elite bodyguards against like supernatural creatures like I get that it's YA and so that's kind of just the way that YA tends to work that once you're 18 you become like the most mature most like responsible person ever but like that's just really not how the world works like at 18 like what are you even ready to handle so I'm aging everyone up also like the fact that there's kind of a the romance needs to be aged up because otherwise that's just gonna give everyone the ick like you can't read this book and want them to be together and then think about the fact she's like 17 and he's like way older than her like that's just no no but yeah those are the six books i read this year or this year it's only the first month of the year those are the six books i read in january i am slightly disappointed i only really had two good reads this month but there's so many good books coming out this year so i'm really not worried i'm sure there'll be tons of four and five star books for me to enjoy but yeah that's a wrap on my january wrap up